Amen. I like that. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creature here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? I, I hope you're praising Him this morning. I, I do. I, I, he's worthy of our praise. Amen. Who cleanses us from all sin. You know, think about that. If you're born again... We stand before Him uh, guiltless this morning by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, the world will throw your sins up in your face. The devil will throw your sins up in your face. People will throw them up in your face. But before God Almighty, we stand guiltless, cleansed, redeemed, sanctified, and holy this morning. Hey, I tell you what, that's who I live for. Amen. Think about that. I, I answered a hymn this morning. I was I was coming and, and all the rain and everything, seeing the, the uh, ditches and the, the creeks and the rivers overflowing and the rain just the I said, God, let that be your spirit this morning in our soul. Let it overflow. Amen. Let it let it pour it on us like that mighty rushing water going down that embankment there. Just let it overflow in us this morning. Experience your blessings this morning. I, I tell you, we're blessed people. Amen. Good to see everybody. Uh, glad that everybody come out uh, in the rain this morning. I know the weather's not fair. A lot of people's fair weather churchgoers. Amen. Uh, but but bad weather separate the uh, the uh, professors from the possessors. Amen. Now I know a lot of people just couldn't make it this morning. That's understandable. We need to pray for them. Uh, Mom and Dad's a little bit under the weather this morning, so uh, pray for them and. Lift them up to the Lord this morning. Brother Dennis, Brother John said, had, had hurt his back. Uh, so pray for him and uh, uh, lift him up to the Lord this morning. Continue to pray for Angie uh, Setzer. She goes for a stress test this week. And if that goes okay, then they're going to do her surgery this week. So we pray for a good report. And God just give her the strength to uh, get through that test, uh, stress test and have that surgery and get this behind her and just move forward. Uh, uh, continue to remember uh, those that uh, you know are struggling with sickness. I know uh, Roxanne Brooks and her family have been battling with COVID. So uh, pray for them and lift them up to the Lord in prayer. And it uh, seems like I've, I've heard more this week of people that I've known that's uh, come down with that COVID than, than in a while. So uh, remember them and, and lift them up to the Lord in prayer. It's still out there. Uh, it's still something that we need to take uh, plenty of precautions uh, 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 against and uh, protect ourselves and protect others. Amen. Especially our, our church family. We need to uh, make sure that we protect each other. So uh, just continue to kind of, um, especially if you're around a lot of folks, you know, through the week and uh, just be uh, respectful uh, to that and, and, and just, you know, let people know that you love them and, and, um, and uh, appreciate them and, and, and try to maintain uh, our best uh, safety that we can uh, and protecting uh, each other from that. Um, anything else before we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, Polly? I'm going to have surgery Wednesday. Uh, they found some skin cancers and they're going to put them off. Well, let's pray for Polly. Amen. Pray for Polly. She goes and has that removed this morning. Uh, anybody else this morning? Uh, me and Tommy and Tammy will be heading back to Alabama on Monday to try to some legal issues and amen amen Lord, certainly we'll be remember y'all in prayer and continue to lift y'all up in in this difficult time um tammy yes amen certainly much amen. needs there remember rebecca and and her uh friend cassie her college uh mate cassie they was down in georgia uh this week went down there to see the ball game and um, she's not in uh, good sorts this morning. Uh, but I said, hey, there's always next week. Amen. Uh, always tomorrow. No matter how bad yesterday is or today is, there's always tomorrow. Amen. You know, I kind of fell into that a little bit real quickly. You know, how much worse can 2020 get? And I thought, man, 2020 is just a bad year, man. Just And then I got to counting my blessings. Amen. And I realized 2020 ain't so bad after all. Praise God. Amen. And you know, God's been good to us, church. I mean, think about that. And and so let's just look to Him and, 
And, uh, you know, just give Him glory for today. Uh, because tomorrow we're not promised. Amen? Uh, anything else before we go to the Lord in prayer? Good to see Brother Boyce and Carolyn with us back there. And, uh, Brother Boyce just looked good coming through the door back there. And we just thank God for that. Continue praying for them. And, uh, uh, and lift him up to the Lord in prayer and Carolyn as well. Anything else for good Lord in prayer? I got a, I got a card here we want to read. Uh, Tyler and I are so blessed to have a loving church family. Thank you all so much for your support and prayers. We love you all and certainly we love uh, you as well. And glad to see Darlene back. Uh, in church this morning. Her and Tyler's uh, had a difficult couple months, but we're glad that uh, things are on the turn for them. Continue to pray for Tyler's. Um, he's still uh, having uh, issues with his uh, feeding and stuff like that, but I talked to Darlene yesterday or Friday and said he had a really good day. He was smiling more, and uh, so we thank the Lord for that. So continue to pray for them as well. Anything else before we go to the Lord in prayer? Remember the lost, remember our country, remember our leaders so much. Uh, to pray for as we come uh, going into uh, an election season again. Uh, there's a lot of weight on, on our, our uh, country's shoulders. Uh, a lot of people's confused. A lot of people's divided. And we, pray, we need to turn to God in this time, church. and uh, Not to the polls, not to the news media, but we need to turn to God. Brother John. Yeah. Amen. 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 You know, I, I think about Job, uh, how he went to God every day and sacrificed for his children and his family, and saying perhaps uh, there there be something in them. Uh, he interceded. Amen. And and church, there's nothing like interceding. Amen. Intercessory prayer. God takes note of that when we go to Him. Uh, with intercessory prayer for, for our loved ones and our family and friends and even lost. So many of us uh, know people that's lost. I, I've, I've met so many people and, uh, um, down at uh, work and that I've, I've been able to talk to and, and, and it just needs the Lord. Amen? And people are searching, but they're searching everywhere but uh, uh, to Him. So we need to, we need to pray for them this morning. Anything else for good Lord prayer? Um, uh, unspoken by raise hands. Certainly the Lord knows all about them. Uh, let's bow our heads and I'm asked if you would, Brother John, would you lead us to the throne of grace? Father God, we humble God, we do. There's so much that we're going on with Jeremiah, he tried to tell us, so Jeremiah, not be scared of your face. Amen, yes. Yes. Yes, yes Lord. Yes. Father, yes, God. Lord, we need your mercy. And we need your blessings and your grace. But God, most of all, we need your guidance and your leadership, Father. Lord, we've all got our opinions. We've all got our personal thoughts. God, we've got our ideas. But God, they're nothing, Father, if they don't come from heaven. God, we need direction. We need leadership. We need guidance today, Father. More than we ever have, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes. Lord, just give them traveling grace and safety. Lift them up and encourage them, Father, in this time of, of bereavement, God. And Lord, we glory, Father, in your grace and Lord, in your protection and your guidance, Father. We thank you for that, God. Just continue to bless them, God, and open up the windows of heaven and shower down on him and Tony and their families, Father. Lift them up and encourage them, Father. And Lord, for all the sick and the afflicted, those stricken with COVID, God, we pray that you touch them in a mighty way, Father. Lord, we know your healing hand is still outstretched to those that call upon you, Father. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Lord, you are. Lord, thank you, Father. Yes, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
God, you, you've been so good to us, and we thank you for it, Lord. Uh, God, I, I pray, Lord, that uh, everything that's said and done in this service, God, yes, uh, put a big smile on your face. Amen. 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 Yes, you, God, yes, 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 sir. The truth, and I pray, God, you'd have your way with everything. Bless us all, and I pray Lord. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 this morning, if you left here without Jesus, where would you go? Think about that. If people would just grasp that concept this morning, where could I go without the Lord? I, I was thinking about a time that um, Jesus was teaching and preaching and healing and feeding and nursing and taking care of all the people that followed Him. Yep. And and many, many thousands of people are following. Great multitudes, the Bible tells us, followed Jesus everywhere He went. I mean, and this, this carried on for a long time. And finally, one day, Jesus turned around and He began to tell them what it would take to make heaven their home. Yes, and all of a sudden, those people, they turned they and they left Jesus. And the Bible gives us no indication that they ever came back. 
And as those people left, Peter turned to the Lord and said, Lord, you had a good thing here. You had many people following you, many people trust you, and Lord, now you've offended them, and Lord, now they've left. Lord, do you not know that you've made them mad? And Jesus just looked at Peter and said, Peter, will you also leave me? And for one time in old Peter's life, he got it right. All of a sudden, that hit his heart, and he began to thank Lord, if I left you, where would I go? Where would I go? In times of difficulty, church, where are we going to go? In times of when we get bad news and the doctors have, have all the answers and, and now they don't have no answers and, if, if, and they can't do nothing else for us, where else could we go if we don't go to Jesus? I'm glad this morning that I can go to Him for everything. Amen? That there's no other source, no other power, no other knowledge, no other wisdom that I go to except, Lord, I realize there's nowhere else to go but to the Lord this morning. When I'm hurting, I can go to the Lord. When I'm suffering, I can go to the Lord. When I'm sick, I can go to the Lord. When I'm in trouble, I can go to the Lord. When our country's in dire straits, I can go to the Lord this morning. So think about that. Where, if, you, if you leave here today without Jesus... Where else are you going to go?
Thank God for being in the house of the Lord. Yes, amen. Yes. 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 Thought and think my mind. I'm trying to couldn't get thought out. Bless the Lord. Lord, Lord. 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 And I'm thought. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 My house is full, but the fields are empty. How true that is. But today, uh, we can look around and we can see that even God's house isn't full anymore. Amen. Jesus said, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. And church, we need to be inviting folks to church. And I know there's a lot going on in the world today. There's a lot of people that won't hear and not listen. But that don't ought, ought not stop us from trying. You know, the least any of us can do, we're, we're surrounded by people every day. They say, hey, let me invite you to church, son. Yeah. Uh, that, that is a simple act. Let me, hey, let me invite If Do you go to church? No, well, let me invite you to my church, son. Just come on out. Uh, you'll feel love, the Spirit of God. We just want you to know we care. Just come out and be a part of our fellowship on Sunday. And, you know, maybe they will, maybe they won't. But uh, think about it. That person that we have an opportunity to invite to church and don't yeah. might be a person that never gets an opportunity to receive Christ as their Lord. Yeah. And uh, so just invite somebody to church. Brother Roger said, um, pray for us uh, as, uh, you know, we, we haven't practiced. And um, I thought about that. Uh, you know, when you, uh, doctors, you go to a medical facility, it says medical practice. Uh, lawyers, you know, practice uh, at law. You know, uh, attorney so-and-so practice at law. Well, I, think, pra- I don't ever read in the Bible where God ever had to practice anything. Do you? I mean, when He does it, He does it. Amen. It's finished. Praise God. He's never had to practice. He didn't say, well, uh, Creator uh, 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 at practice. No, God spoke it and it took place. Amen. And He still does that with us uh, this morning, church. God makes no mistakes in our lives. If we just learn to trust Him and be obedient to Him and listen to Him, I tell you, we'll fulfill His will in our life and it's going to be that perfect life. Amen? It's going to be the plan of God and we will not fail. Praise God. If you got your Bibles, turn with me this morning to the book of Hebrews. We're going to continue from last week. Book of Hebrews. I tell you. Brother Lyon, it's like you preach it, the Holy Bible. If you study, you practice, that's the same thing what you're practicing before you get to preach. Yeah, amen. It's the same. Amen. Remember, it's like if somebody playing song, I'm trying to remember, I can't remember what these were. Amen. What to go up and down. Amen. And I'm thankful. Amen. Well, that's what I'm saying. You can't, the Holy Ghost take care of everything, won't it? I mean, I, t- I thought, Lord, uh, uh, first time I was ever going to preach, I said, I, I, y'all heard the story, I, I'll never get through this. I, I just felt like I didn't have enough time to prepare, and, and I just uh, answered the call to the ministry, and, and I thought for sure I was going to make a mess out of it, and had men been up there preaching at that meeting longer than I've been living. I thought, what in the world could I do? And got up there and I was so nervous. I didn't want to preach. I told Ronnie I was sick. And they took me back there and started praying for me, which is the last thing I wanted them to do. And, uh, but anyways, uh, you know, I got up there. And uh, I told you, uh, I thought, hey, boy, uh, singing was good. People were shouting. I thought, well, praise God, it's going to be one of them. We're not going to need no preaching. <laughs> Brother Ronnie got up there. He's overfilled and uh, just full of the Holy Ghost. And I thought he said, well, the, the Lord's done his work here. And he said, without further ado, I thought, oh, Lord. But you know, God got me up there, and I hardly remember anything about it at all. And, buddy, he just took care of everything. Yeah. Amen. So when I trusted him, I said, all right, God, I'm going to have to give this to you. I don't know the first thing about it. Amen. And he took, he took care of it. So uh, I always trust the Lord. Hebrews chapter 3, we're going to read verses 7 uh, through 12. And like I said, this is similar as what we read in Psalms last week, 95. Uh, but the application is brought up today. And that's what we need to understand uh, this morning. So the Bible says in Hebrews 3, chapter 7, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, Today, if you will hear His voice. Now church, I, I want you to, if you, if you mark your Bible, underline it. Today, not tomorrow. He didn't say, well, if you happen to be out tomorrow and you hear His voice. No, today, right now, 
Today is the day for each and every one of us right now. It is imperative. It is important. It is of the most urgency that right now, if we hear the voice of the Lord, amen, there, there's, he, He's not leaving no time. No. He said, right now. Right now I'm speaking to you. Right now I'm talking to you. Right now I'm speaking through the pastor. Right now I'm speaking through my word. So right now, this very moment, if you will hear my voice. And church, we ought to always come into the house of God. Lord, let us hear your voice. God, don't let me hear the preacher. Don't let me hear Angie. Don't let me hear Brother Roger. Don't let me hear it. God, let me hear your voice. Let me hear your voice speak through that music. Let me hear your voice speak through that song. Let me hear your voice speak through your word. Let me hear you, Lord. Today, if as the Holy Ghost said, He's the speaker. If you will hear His voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, in a day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation. In other words, God said, wherefore I concluded, I, I, that generation w- was ended. I was grieved with that generation and said that they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swear. And church, we know what the Bible says. God says when He swears by His own name, there's no higher authority to swear by. I swear in my wrath that they shall not enter into my rest. Now look what He's telling us. God said, this is what I did then. And Paul tells us that the Old Testament was written, what? For our learning. You know, it amazes me. I watched, uh, I was watching a little bit with Charles Stanley this morning. Both messages was awesome. I was so blessed this morning. And uh, then after that, uh, Good Morning, uh, Sunday Morning in America comes on. I remember watching that as a, as a kid. With Charles Corral. Many of y'all remember that? Uh, Sunday morning with Charles Corral. I look forward to that every Sunday before church. I mean, it just gave insight of our country and just of our nation. I I didn't pick up no biases in it. It was just good news. It was informative. It just just built your day up. And and, and I always loved that. But but now, it's it's just turned to... to, an ideology of trying to change America, trying to change culture, is indoctrination. And, and, and I discovered this morning they're on there now they're trying to uh, they're trying to uh, do away with our founding father George Washington and, and and Christopher Columbus and take down all the monuments and and, and and move them from history and 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 take them out of that. But church history means what? Am I not? His story. And, and history is told it's somebody's story of what happened uh, in the past yeah. so that we would get knowledge and learn. And that's what this is. The Bible is His story. It's history. And that's exactly what He's telling us here. Uh, Paul said, uh, learn from it. And the Holy Spirit is saying today, learn from it. I'm telling you what I did back then. I'm telling you what the children of Israel did. How I brought them out. How I prospered them. How I fed them. How I took care of them. How that I, 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 I gave them these promises. And yet they refused. They walked in sin. They walked in idolatry. They walked in disobedience. They, 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 they provoked me. They, they challenged me. And they wouldn't accept what I had for them. And He's telling us today, therefore, if you know I did it to them... You better take heed. Take heed. Not not many churches is is taking heed today. I I don't know about you, but if I go into a yard and it says no trespassing, or if it's got a beware sign up, I take heed to that. Amen? If I I go to do something at work and I see a a danger sign or or if I see something that says caution, I'm going to take heed to that. Amen? And and God is telling us, the Holy Ghost here is telling the church today, 
Look, I, I preached to you last week on what God did to Israel and how God made promises to them, take them to a land flowing with milk and honey, and, and He would give it to them. All you got to do is go out there and possess it and follow me, and it's yours. I, I'll tear down kingdoms. I'll, I'll win every battle. I'll take care of you. I'll provide for you. I, I'll be there with you. All you got to do is do what I say and go out there and get it, and it's yours. But yet they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. And God says, because you were disobedient, because you erred in your heart, because you purposed in your heart to do your own thing and to do it your own way and disobey me when I knew what was in your best interest, I knew I knew I had a plan for you, and it was a plan of success, it was a plan of victory, it was a plan of overcoming, it was a plan of salvation for you and the children of Israel to deliver you from the enemy and out of bondage, and yet you refused. Used it and you erred in your hearts and said, God, we really don't need you. We know better about this than you do. And so God is telling the church today, after He established a final plan that Jesus Christ would be the Savior of the world, the only way to heaven, the only way to Him, the only way to eternal life, and yet people today is going about and saying, God, we've got a better way, we've got better ideas, we've got better thoughts. God, we don't really need that. We'll take the good things, but Lord, we don't want the other things. And God said, we're going to go about and establish our own ways, so we're erring in our hearts today. And God says you better take heed take heed take heed brethren the church lest there be any of you of me of an evil heart of unbelief you see there it is in departing from the living God but exhort one another daily while it's called a day, lest any of you should be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Now, now I talked last week, and I'm going to finish this up today, about a hardening of your heart. And as a church, and, and even as... As Paul here, and, and it's, it's, it's thought that Paul was the writer of Hebrews and studying it and reading it, 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 it really leans heavily toward a Pauline epistle or a doctrine. So we, we, we go with that. And I got to believe that, that Paul was making a plea to the church, to, to, the, to the modern church, the, 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 the blood covenant church. Uh, he was making a plea to those that, that had come out of the law and realize that through the law that no flesh is justified. Through the works of the flesh, no, no, no uh, deeds are justified. And, and, and come to Jesus Christ and accepted the blood atonement and Him as a perpetuation for our sins and, and, and trusted in Him. And now all of a sudden, somewhere along that line, they've reverted back to the law. Now these were, these, these were, these were good people. This was the church of God. And Paul said somewhere along the line you did run well. Who hath hindered you that you obey not the truth? And so Paul said, look, let me remind you of what happened to the children of Israel. Lest you take that same route and you be left out of the rest or the salvation or the eternal eternal life of God Almighty. And depart from His Word and departing from Jesus and departing from the faith. So so we see that and we think about this and hardened of heart through the deceitfuls of sin. Um, what, what, What many of us think about, and I brought it last week, and we think about sin, that's the other guy. Right? We, we, we think about sin as, uh, you know, the, 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 the carnal sins. The, uh, we look at people that's uh, addicted to drugs or people that's, that's uh, uh, hooked on alcohol or, or people that, that, that curse like a sailor or, or people that's just evil or uh, these people out here that's creating all this chaos and turmoil and people that kill unborn babies. That's, that, that, that's what we register in our minds as sin. But, but Paul's not dealing with that at all with the brethren. Right. 
Paul's dealing with the sin of the heart. The sin of, 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 of doing it your way. The sin of departing from the living God. The sin of religion. The sin of, 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 of uh, uh, the law. The law was perfect. And they thought that they could go back under the law. And today people justify their own self. That they forget about the sins in their own life. Well, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't dip, I don't chew, I don't kick my cat, I don't cuss, I don't do this, I don't go to bars, I don't do none of these things that ever, all these other sinners do. But we forget about the sins of pride. Yes. The sin of pride. Pride says, I don't care. I, I'm going to do it my way. I, I don't care. I'll never forgive them for what they've done. I, I don't care, God. Listen, I'm justified in what I'm doing. God, you don't know how bad they hurt me, God. I, I'll ne- I, 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 I might, or I might forgive them, but I'll never forget it. The sin of pride. Pride says, I'm taking control. Pride says, I know everything. Pride, pride, what does pride do? Pride, I believe, hardens a man's heart quicker than anything else. When you're proud, nothing can remove that. We're, we're proud of our children. My, 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 my pride for my daughter is unmovable. It's unpenetrable. That, that is the, the love of my life. And I am so proud of her that, that, that no matter what anybody says, what anybody, that would never remove it because I'm set. I'm proud. But that pride can always be you. Pride says that, that that's me and, I, and I'm, gonna do, is, I'm unmovable to this thing. And God, not even you can touch it. When I, when I believe it and I'm settled with it, that's it. Pride. There, the, the sin of of, 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 of anger. Yes, come on, preacher. The sin of discord. Yes. The sin of saying, well, I'm okay, preacher. I go to church every week. I, I pay my tithes and I'm faithful to that. And I, I, do, I, do, I do work at the church and, 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 and I do all of these things and I've been a member of that church. I've been baptized with water. But yet in our heart of hearts, we know that we're not living right with God, that Jesus don't take precedence in our life that we don't have a personal relationship with Him. And pride is saying, God, I'm going to do it through my own ways and my own words, and that's good enough, God. I don't necessarily need everything that you've got to offer. Mm -hmm. Pride is when God is dealing with your heart. When you feel that still, small nudge, whatever it may be. Now, I don't know. I, I pray everybody hears your heart's pure and clean. And, but I'm just telling you, we need to focus on this as the Holy Spirit because the church today, they don't understand. The, the church today is just going about thinking because they're, they're good and they do good works and, and they come to church every week. They've got a lot of religion, but they don't have no righteousness. And that is pride. And it's a sin against God. And I believe that more people will be in hell because of pride than any other cause ever known to man. God, I'll not do that. When God is dealing with our hearts and, and the Holy Spirit is drawing us to God for whatever it is and, and, and you just sit there you're, you're, and, and, and you're not moving and you're not, you're not opening your door and you're not responding to God, then you're hardening your heart to God. When Moses had went to Pharaoh and said, God has sent me. Now Moses knew, he, he even told God he, he, he couldn't do it. God, see, think about that. When God had talked to Moses in that burning bush, and, and, and pride, pride lifted up in Moses. Because when God says, I want you to go to Pharaoh, you're going to be a leader of my people. You didn't, uh, uh, you go and tell Pharaoh to let, uh, he said, he said, Lord, I can't do that. I, I, I'm married. I, I can't, I, I'm not a good talk. You know, you know what the problem was? Moses, Moses knew in his heart that he killed a man. He didn't say, God, I can't go. I just killed a man. That's why I'm out here in this wilderness. I, that's why I had to run. See, God knew that. But pride said, God, I, I, 
ah, the, ah, the yeah. stutter. Yeah. You see? And, and, and that's what pride does to us today. We, we hold that thing in our heart. And when God is trying to get it out and relieve us of it, and, and we begin to justify ourselves, well, God, I, I'm, I'm, I'm right in what I'm doing. I mean, I, I know who I am. I had a talk with somebody this week called me having a bad, having a bad week and frustrated and mad and angry and, and, and all this. I said, look, you've got to let that thing go. I said, you're destroying yourself. You're, that, that, that person that's bothering you, there, you're not hurting them. You're hurting yourself. You, you, listen, even though you're right, you, you know, you've got to suffer as the wrong that's the word. and go on. Come on. And say, I, I'm not going to let this thing get me down. I, and I told her that words, the song we sang there. I said, listen, go to the Lord. And, and, and she's, she's a Christian, and she's a, a young Christian, and she's learning, and, and, she's, she's, and, and these things come, and, and, and she, she, she'll turn to me a lot of times and, and call me and, and, and say, Larry, I need you to pray for me, or Larry, I need you to help, or, or thank you, Larry, for help. I said, look, go, take it to the Lord. Amen. That, that's your first place. Go to the Lord. The Lord will help you. Amen. Don't hold on to that thing. Amen. But... Sins. Um, sin of deception. Th- these are sins that we harbor in our hearts that's not that done in the flesh. Uh, uh, that, 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 that we overlook so many times and we, we justify ourselves. But those things, uh, they, they, they just continue to harden our heart. They will. Uh, Paul says, let us lay aside every way to sin. That what does so easily beset? Church, when we carry these things in our heart, anger and maliciousness and, 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 and uh, um, those things that, that we justify, when we carry those things in our heart, it weighs us down. And that begins to harden our heart. And like that adamant stone that, that God says that Israel had hardened their heart life, uh, sooner or later, if we don't get these things out of our life and make them right with God then and, and, and have them removed and, and, and just say, God, I, I surrender to you. Listen, then our heart becomes an adamant stone. And sooner or later, you'll be sitting in church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and the preacher's preaching and God's moving and the Holy Ghost is speaking and you don't even feel it. And that'd be a terrible position to be in. I tell, uh, I remember Brother Beecher said one time, he said, Lord, don't never harden my heart. He, God, don't ever let me get to the position where your word don't touch my heart. God, if it's wrong, I want to know it's wrong. First time I ever preached up there, he come, he's one that come to me and said, Brother Larry, you can't preach it too straight for me. And this man, he's been holding his preacher for 70 years. Think about that. He said, Brother Larry, don't hold back. You can't preach it too straight for me. Hey, if I'm wrong, I want God to show me I'm wrong. And a lot of times we'll, we'll put that, that, that covering over our heart to the things that we like to hold on to and we don't want God to touch that and all the while it's harder in our heart. I tell you church, it's a fearful thing. Now listen to me. It's a fearful thing to allow sin to go undetected in our lives. Fearful. Because if we continue to hold on to that thing, sooner or later, it's going to become part of us and we're going to justify it and we're going to see no wrong in it whatsoever. And all of a sudden, when the Spirit's been knocking on that door, knocking on that door, uh, He's not going to be knocking no more. Hey, God, there is a place that God will turn us over to a reprobate heart to believe those things. Huh? People all the time. Preacher, what do you think about it? don't matter what I think. What does the Bible say about it? Bible says abortion is wrong. It's wrong. Yep. 
Bottom line, the uh, Bible says that, 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 that fornication is wrong. It's wrong. By, 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 the Bible says that, that, that uh, you know, drinking is wrong. It's wrong. The Bible says that lying is wrong. It's wrong. Hey, there's no big, there's no little white lie and a big black lie. Lying is lying and it all falls under sin and it's wrong. Yes, it is. Somebody said one time that a lie traveled around the world two times before the truth ever gets its shoes on. That's true. Huh? That thing will just keep getting bigger and bigger, and we'll justify. Do you know we you we we can make ourselves believe something's not true, can't we? We will absolutely convince ourselves that we're right. But it didn't start out that way, did it? When we do something, if we've got the Holy Spirit living in us, God checks us. I don't know about you, but He checks me all the time. All the time. And there's something I've got to do with that. I've either got to acknowledge it and take it to God and make it right and get it out of my life or, or I can just let that thing bypass and justify it and then the next time it'll be a little bit easier and then, then pretty soon down the road you'll not convince me that I'm wrong. That's right. That's the truth. And you know what? God can't convince you you're wrong yep. because God will not cross your wheel. He won't. That's the only thing that God cannot do. He'll not make man do anything. He'll not make man accept salvation. That's right. We're, he made us free. And we, we've got the opportunity to choose that, to choose right or good. But, but hard and hard. Hard and hard. Now look here real quickly. When one's heart becomes hard, and this is, that, that, that's how our heart becomes hard. We've got these little things in our lives that we know what the Bible says about them, but yet we continue to hold on to them. Gossiping. Mm-hmm. Huh? Come on, preacher. You know, why do people gossip? Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. Why, why are we so quick to tell something that somebody else already told, that somebody else already told, that somebody else already told? Yeah. Let's say it. And it happens often. Oh, but preacher, I'm just telling what somebody told me. Do you know under the law that was an offense of yeah. death? Yeah, well, yeah. You know what it was called? Bearing false witness. Yeah. What do you mean, preacher? I've never bared false witness. Anything somebody told me and I know they told me the truth. It might have been. But under the law, if you didn't eyewitness it, no. you was a false witness. Brother Kermit come in here and he, he saw something happen. And I know Brother Kermit would never lie to me. And he told me verbatim exactly what happened. And I go over here and I tell uh, Brother Dwayne, under the law... I just bared false witness because I didn't actually see that thing happen. And we're so quick. Did you hear about so and so? No. Don't really want to hear about so and so. This is good. Huh? I told you what Brother Hicks said about them people coming to his house wanting to run down members in his church. Talking about them, talking about this. Well, if ain't that about a shape, let's just get down and pray for yeah, it. It's a true story. Go. He got down right there with me and started praying. When he got done praying, y'all got no brother Charles Hitch. When he got done praying, they was gone. They didn't want to pray. They wanted to gossip. Busy bodies. Now, I'm talking to the church. Churches are full of busy bodies. Meddling in everybody else's business. That's the only reason the devil ever invented Facebook, so you can mail in everybody's business. Busy about it. Worried about him. Worried about worry about yourself. Amen. Him and her's not going to stand with you at the judgment. Amen. Hey, you need to worry about you. Amen. All right, I must be hitting home now. All right, so we we got that understood. Church, I'm telling you. I, I'm pointing the finger at myself. Yeah. We got to ask God every day, God, if there's anything. David cried out, God, God, try the reins of my. Hey, you know, sometimes those things are in there and we're really not even aware of them. Lord, I didn't realize how bad a shape I was until I heard the preacher preaching. Yep. Come on, I just, you know, chugging along, doing all right. Man, I, when I left, when I started hearing, going to church and hearing the preacher tell me how bad I was, and man, I tell you what, I feel, I didn't want to go back. But finally, thank God, I realized it wasn't him, but it was God revealing to me that I was lost. Somebody said, well, preacher, how does a person get saved? 
I mean, how do you just come to that? So, so, and you know, that's a difficult question. We say, well, we just we go to church and God deals with our heart. And, and, and we, we just ask Him to come into our heart and lie. But let me tell you something. My response was, well, if, if, you're, if, if you're going to a destination you've, you've never been before, and somebody just told you about it, and you set out to go there, but you have no idea where it's at. You have no, you've never heard of that before, but, it, but you want to get there. I said, when would you stop? At what point on your way to that destination would you stop and ask for directions? Yeah. They said, I guess when I realize I'm lost. Yep. Yeah. Amen. And I said, there you go. Yes. One day I was sitting in church just thinking everything. Preacher never bothered me. You know, I just had my, my heart was like an adamant stone. I I sit back there and God would deal with me and I say, Well, I'm gonna fix this, I'm gonna turn over a new leaf, yep. and I'm gonna do better, and all this. I walk out that door just as lost as I was when I come in. But one day, thank God, I realized yeah. that I was lost. I was I was trying to get to a destination. I wanted to get there. I had to, I had a means to get there, but but and I meant to get there, but 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 I was just going my own way and, and then finally one day, hey, I realized I'm lost. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Huh? We all been there. Yes, thank you, Father. And when we realize we lost, then we go to the one that knows the direction. Amen. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. So, so when one becomes... Now, now here's what Paul's saying, lest we become hard in heart. When one becomes... One's heart becomes hard, and here's what happens, and this is the he. We become insensitive to the Word of God. How, think about that. What does the Word of God do to you? This is a checkup. When you hear preaching, or you hear the Word of God preach, not, not, I'm not going to say when you hear me, because it's not me, I promise you that. But, but when you hear the Word of God, how's your response to it? When we harden our hearts, we become insensitive to the Word of God. Think about it. The word of God don't it don't it don't it don't touch us. It don't it don't move us. It don't convict us. It don't it, it don't persuade us. It don't enlighten us. We, we, we become insensitive to the word of God. When our hearts become hard and we, we don't read and study the word of God like we used to, we don't we, we don't we don't we don't listen to it like we used to. It don't mean uh, 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 what it used to mean to us. We become insensitive to it. Well, I'm just going to go about my way, continue. And I remember when I got saved, and 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 I, you know, and, and I never forget the day, and I truly was saved, and that experienced man. And, and I, I'm just, uh, I don't have to read my Bible every day now. It's, it's, I'm just so busy. I ain't got, I ain't got a whole lot of time to read it like I used to. And, and and you think about it, when you used to read your Bible all the time, you didn't have any more time then than you got now. That's right. Amen. But what what was wrong? I mean, what happened? You had a love for that word. You had a love yeah. for it. Couldn't yeah. wait to get in. You were consumed by it. And now all of a sudden, it's like you just pick it up and read a scripture. Well, God, I'm done. I read my scripture for today. I'm going to go out. I got a lot to get done today. I got to go to work. I got to take care of my family. I got I got to get groceries. I got to babysit. I got to go here. I got to go there. I, I got to drop this off. I got to pick that up. And God, that's good enough. And we become insensitive to the Word of God. You, it, you don't believe it. Think about the last years here. And I would say, because I believe, to my knowledge, and by what I know of you and what you told me, that, that you're saved. And, and you're on your way to heaven. But just look at how insensitive we become to the Word of God. The altar's never used anymore. Huh? Hey, this thing ain't just for sinners. Come on, that's right. Huh? It ain't just for sinners, but it's never used. Why? Because we become insensitive to the Word of God. We begin to harden our hearts. And church, we need to take heed to that lest we fall after the same manner of unbelief. When our hearts become hardened, it becomes easier and easier to reject God and reject His Word. Huh? When God is dealing with us about these little things in our life, and we reject, and our heart becomes hard, it's easy. Come to church, listen to the preacher, go home. That's it. Just, just reject what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. 
Holy Ghost might be moving you to do something. Holy Ghost might be leading you, bringing something to light in your life. And, and, and all of a sudden, well, no, I'm good. And thank you, Lord, but I'm going on. And, and, and we become intolerant. We reject the Lord. It's easier and easier. When our heart becomes hardened, it, we get less concerned about the sinner's condition. Now listen, this is one area I believe that I can see above me that the church is, is become. When, when, when God's people's heart becomes hardened, we lose interest right. in the souls of the Lord. We lose interest in what's going on out there in the lost and dying world. We become insensitive to all the sin that's out there. And, and, and we start like Peter did when he rejected the Lord. And we'll get, we just warm up to the world's fire instead of getting away from that and letting God start a fire in our own life. When our heart becomes hardened, church, we're walking on dangerous ground. I can't think of a time in my life or even what I've studied and read about the history of church that I've seen the hardening of hearts like there are today. As much as going on in our world today, the violence, the uncertainty, the division, the chaos, the, 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 the turmoil, the hatred, the evil, the killing, the church today has become hard. Because we ought to be on our knees praying. Amen. Preaching is necessary. Singing is essential. Uh, worship is, is, is good. And, and, and it builds us up. But church, we're, 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 we're become hardened to the greatest tool that we have. And that's the tool of prayer. Because when we see the condition of the world today, listen, it ought to drive us to our knees. It ought to drive us to the altar. It ought to drive us to God. But instead, our hearts have become hardened. Tell it, preacher. Come on. And we just sit here. Listen. And do nothing. And do nothing. When Moses went to Pharaoh and said, let my people go. Pharaoh began to harden his heart. But now listen. We hear that a lot, but we, we don't... You ever... You know, we, we've been taught when you've got a document, a legal document... Or an agreement, a lease, um, or anything like that. What's the first thing you want to make sure to do? Read the fine print. Amen. We very rarely read the fine print. Man, them things, so buying a car now, man, it's, it's, it's 30 minutes worth of signing paperwork. And we very rarely read those small prints or those disclosures that get us every time. And that's where we are with the Word of God. Oh yeah, Pharaoh hardened his heart, but it's his own fault. But what happened? When Pharaoh hardened his heart against God, God added to that. Yes. He does. Yes, he did. Church, when we reject God, God will let us go on. Amen. And it gets double hard. Yep. And, double, and we reject Him again. He, uh, it, it, Again, another portion, and again, another portion. And it's like, all of a sudden, he, your, your heart's so hardened. You're just so far away from God and out of touch with Him. You think you're all right. You think you're on the right road. And you're on that road to destruction. See, Pharaoh thought he was doing right. Well, okay, finally, these people's getting on my nerves. I can't take it no more. Just let them go. God, I'll let them go. And he did. But then he said, now let's go after him. Yes, he did. And that hardened heart that rebelled against the word of God. Yes. God said, let them go, Pharaoh. Don't, don't have nothing to do with this. Let them, they're my people. Just let them go. Let them walk out of here. Worship me and serve me and, and, and leave them alone. All right, God, I know. But in his heart, it was hard. Yep. Oh, I'm going to let them go, all right, but then I'm going to go get them. And Pharaoh's heart become hard, and what happened? He met his own destruction because his heart was hardened. 
thinking he was doing right as Pharaoh and, 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 and getting rid of these people that so plagued uh, his own country and, and thinking he was doing some kind of good service. I'm just going to get rid of them. Man, they've not done nothing but torment and tortured us, so I'm just going to get rid of them. And, and, and his heart was so hard, he thought he was doing right, but he met his own destruction. Yep, he did. In church, when we harden our heart to God, it's dangerous. It is. It's dangerous. We'll think we're doing right. Yes. But in the end, we'll meet our own destruction. Meet our own destruction. We stand before God and give all kinds of accounts, all kinds of excuses, all kinds of reasoning. And God's going to show us every opportunity that we have. But instead of choosing what He had for us, we chose our own path. There is a way that what? Right. Seems right unto man. But the end thereof are what? The ways of death. A way. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Church, we need to take heed today. We need to ask God, is our heart hardened? Is God dealing with us this morning? What do we do about a heart, hardened heart? Listen, in short, we hear the gospel message. As the Holy Spirit has said, today, if you had heard His voice, act now. Today is the day. Don't harden your heart. If you go out these doors and God is dealing with you today, what you're doing is you're hardening your heart. And the next time God deals with you, it's going to be a little bit easier to reject. And then a little bit easier. A little bit, yeah. And then, then, then sooner or later, you're, not, you're going to think you're right because you say, hey, God's, He's not dealing with me anymore. Yeah, that's right. Not dealing with me anymore. I'm, I'm good now. Finally got rid of that thing. And what you've done is you've put a hard shield up over it. Yeah. And neither you nor anybody else can see it anymore. Wherefore, the Holy Ghost has said today, if you hear His voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of us, and the Bible says you, of an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Now, as our musicians come this morning, well, preacher, I believe. I believe. I believe in Jesus. I believe that God is our Father. I believe that heaven is real. I believe that heaven. I believe that sin is wrong. But, but that belief goes so much further. Do you, do you believe that what God is revealing to you is either right or wrong? Well, I believe, a lot of people believe in Jesus, but they don't know Him. A lot of people have a profession, but they don't have a possession. A lot of people live right in church, but outside of church it's a different story. Do you know the best example of how we live? If you really want to know who somebody is, ask the people that they work with. Ask the people they hang around. Yeah. Yeah. They'll tell you exactly what kind of life they live. And we ought to take that to thought today. If people that knew us better than anybody else. You know, I, 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 I'm convinced sometimes that's why people don't invite people that they know to church. Because they know them better than we do. Yeah. They do. And, and if they come to church, they can't see them jumping pews and hollering and cutting flips and everything. Yeah. Well, what's he doing? Yeah. I ain't never seen him do. I seen him kick chairs and throw tables and. <laughs> now I, I'm I'm not saying anybody's like that here, <laughs> but I'm saying we need to evaluate ourselves as the body of Christ, as individuals, as believers. Church, if God is dealing with you today for anything, don't harden your heart. Say yes to Him, Amen. and you'll be glad you did. We stand. my Bible like I used to. And God, I, I don't want to get to where I don't read it no more, God. 
God, I don't pray like I used to. Don't let your heart become hardened to pray. Church, this is for all of you this morning. God is dealing with you. Respond now, today, right now. If you hear His voice, God is speaking to me this morning. I know I've got improvements. I know I can do better. I'm saying yes to Jesus this morning. God, remove anything in me. Pride. Lord, uh, gossip, God. Anger. God, whatever it is, God, remove it from me this morning. God, show me if there's anything like that in my life. Anything that would hinder me, God. Anything that would begin to harden my heart, God, remove it from my life. Maybe it's our family. Maybe it's our children. Maybe it's something that, that, that we, we, we need to pray for. Are we living a life that pleases God? Or are we allowing our heart to become insensitive? You know, often we think we'd hate for somebody just to drop in, but God drops in every day. That's right. You may not come to my house and find out what's going on there, but God already knows. We can hide it from each other, but we can't hide it from God. He's searching us right now. He's trying the reins of our heart. Cleanse us, God. Let us pour it out on this altar. Remove it from our lives, God. Don't let our hearts become have you surrendered to him today preacher you don't know what you're talking about I don't but God does and if you leave here thinking that you've hardened your heart well I believe with all my life heart God has spoken today Heavenly Father, we thank You this morning for another opportunity to be in Your house. We thank You for the reading and preaching and singing of Thy Word. God, I believe with all my heart, God, that the Holy Ghost has spoken. And Lord, He said today, right now, this very minute, if we hear His voice, and God, I've heard it, don't let us harden our hearts. God, let us pour everything, empty us of everything this morning, God, that would be displeasing. No matter how big or how little, God. Let us confess it. Let us empty ourselves of it. God, fill us with the Holy Spirit this morning. Let us, the Holy Ghost run through us like a mighty rushing wind and a mighty waterfall, God, empowering us. And God, if any of be here today of a hardened heart, God, I pray that you break that out of the snow, that you soften that heart up to give it another opportunity Yes, to make things right with you. Yes. Before it comes Adam, impenetrable. Yes. And ultimately destroyed. God, let us have peace and joy yes. and eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God, we're living in the last days. Sure. Paul's talking to the church. The church has been hardened. God, help us to have a burden for sin. God, help it to sicken us. God, help it to turn our stomachs. God, help it to appall us. But God, in a way that we don't condemn, but in a way that you've seen us one day. That's right. That we, we pray for mercy and salvation on those who are practicing it. God, we pray for our great nation. We pray for our country. God, if there's one thing that we need is the body of Christ, it's leadership today. It's guidance. It's direction, God. Don't let us take it upon ourselves to have our own thoughts and to choose our own things. But God, direct us as the body of Christ and the body of body believers. Yeah. Father, the way that we should go concerning our country and our government. God, just move in Washington like you've never moved God, before. Yeah. God, I... I that's a hardened place up there, but God, I pray that you break that stone. God, break down in walls, in barrier. God, begin to move up there. And Lord, separate the sheep from the goat. And let them turn to you. And it's that last days. God, we stand with your people here. We pray for them. 
God, there's a lot going on over there today, God. And Lord, we know your eyes upon them. And God, our eyes ought to be upon them. We pray yeah. for them. We stand beside them, God. Lord, I pray that you lift them up and encourage them. Lord, you said, blessed is a nation that stands with your people, God. And Lord, we need to stand with them and support them and pray for them. And God, that they turn back to Christ in these last days. We love you. Watch over everybody today. Lord, don't let one person leave here without Christ, without having that taken care of. Because, God, once we leave here without Jesus, there's nowhere else to go. That's right. Amen. And, Lord, just ponder, let us ponder on that in our hearts and our souls this morning. Give us all traveling grace. Protect us. Watch over us and bring us back to this one time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love y'all. Appreciate you. Thank God for you. Appreciate you, brother.